The next composition that we will perform for you was written by America's most well-known composer, George Gershwin. 다음으로 연주하게 될 작품은 미국에서 가장 유명한 작곡가로 널리 알려진 조지 고슈인이 80여 년 전에 창작한 것입니다. It is entitled An American in Paris. 제목은 파리의 미국인입니다. Someday a composer may write a work entitled Americans in Pyongyang. 앞으로 언젠가는 평양의 미국인이라는 곡도 나올지 모릅니다. Little did I know that uh, the remark I made introducing uh, the American in Paris uh, would appear on the front page of over 100 newspapers, Americans in Pyongyang. <clears throat> I couldn't possibly know that. First, when we were told about this months ago, uh, before it actually was going to take place, it was just a thought at that point, many people reacted very negatively that, uh, you know, to go to a, a dictatorship. Well, some people were adamantly opposed to going and sent emails to other colleagues saying, look what's going on over there. How can you expect, how can they expect us to go and play for a regime like this? We had a meeting with the full orchestra, and I asked Christopher Hill to please come and talk to them. Yes, there were people who were against it. The management brought in um, Ambassador Hill to talk to us, and he was very good at his job. He's very persuasive, and um, it didn't feel like he was twisting arms to go or, or saying, look, you're going and this is what's going to happen. He just told us what the po positive um, aspects of doing something like this would be. I've been convinced that if we go there and there is a chance that this will start to open up people's minds, if not in the next week, in the next year, then we will have done some good in the world. Our Boeing 747 from Beijing touched down in Pyongyang at about 4 p.m., only a little bit late. The airport seemed dismal, washed in a grayish drizzle. The welcoming committee consisted of North Korean police, minders as they're called, and what seemed like a mass of reporters and photographers. Feel the wet. I think there was anxiety. We didn't know what to expect. They took our cell phones. We weren't going to have contact with our families. So people were a little uptight. Two hundred and eighty people arrived by a 747. And I don't know if a 747 has ever landed at that airport. Uh, they had to bring special ladders and uh, stairs you know, for deplaning, etc. And we went really off the plane, theoretically, into buses to take us to the hotels, which to enter a country like North Korea on that basis is absolutely remarkable. Well, from the moment we got to the airport, the press started to descend on us like we've never had the press descend on us before. Once on terra firma, I was engulfed in a mash of people, questions, microphones, camera, flashbulbs. When we 
piled out of the airplane, there was a great deal of tension and release of tension. Uh, here we were standing on this ground uh, that a group of this size, from America at least, had not done since uh, 60 years ago during the war. We arranged to have a picture taken with the plane in the background, another picture with the whole orchestra with the airport in the background. And it somehow all came together. Everybody was up for it, including the North Koreans. That was the most unusual aspect of it because they were improvising and they're not used to improvise. So we did that, and then we got on our buses all together, and it was snowing, it was very dreary, cold, and we, we drove into um, Pyongyang. Our tour director, he said to us, we're going to be getting on the plane and going one hour on the plane, but going back in time about 60 years. And it seemed a lot more than 60 years to me. The hotel was on an island. It was at this huge building. And we had heard that there was no electricity and no heat in much of Pyongyang, if any of Pyongyang. Well, I think they saved all the heat for us. At the hotel, well, there was a lot of curiosity. We weren't besieged and not crowds or anything, but the, everyone seemed to be watching us. That's certainly not unexpected. We had a half an hour before we were expected to be downstairs on the buses to be taken to uh, a show that the Ministry of Culture was putting on for us. And it was, oh. <laughs> it was getting kind of late and everybody was hungry, but that's what we were going to do, so that's what we did. And we got on the buses and we were taken to a grand hall. They took us almost immediately to an evening of great cultural presentation, dance, music, and song, traditional arts. Obviously, in this country, the arts are extremely important. In fact, to me, it seemed like there was only one of three apparent industries, the others being military and mass sports events. You come in and there are murals, I don't know, three or four stories high, um, all bright colors, all very cheery and very, it's kind of contrasting to the weather and what we had seen coming in and what we sort of know as more of what their reality is.
평양을 따니 평양 국민에서 처음 성과를 거두며 체류기간 즐겁고 유쾌한 나라를 보내기 바랍니다. 그럼 지금부터 평양시 예술인들의 공연을 시작하겠습니다. We wish you great success in the concert and happy stay in our country. Now please be our guests and enjoy the performance of the Pyongyang artists. Yes, they do tend toward unison performance, and we saw the beautiful aspect of that tendency that first night. What impressed us most about this show that they brought us to was the colors of the costumes and the great unwavering smiles on, on the dancers and singers, and it, it just seemed to contradict reality in a way. I was given the honor of offering flowers to the lead ballerina at the final curtain call for all the performers. She seemed quite confused because I don't think she had expected that and just glanced at me very briefly, uh, accepted the flowers, and then of course I backed away. That evening, they're hosting the entire group, the orchestra, the patrons, the press, to a welcome dinner. Oh, there must have been 13 or 14 courses. Many of us felt guilty because we know that there's so much hunger, of course, in North Korea. But then it would have been impolite to refuse such hospitality. They wanted to show us what they did best and what they value. Of course, all the musicians were given minders, so they were watching us and interpreting for us and taking us around. And got nervous if they couldn't find us. And we spoke to them, not about politics, but about, on a, on a human level, um, about what their families are like. And they asked some of us political questions or personal questions, and, and it, w it was very interesting. You know, for 60 odd years, they have been told that all Americans and Westerners are devils with horns. Suddenly they were seeing people who were eating with chopsticks, who liked the food that they were being served, who applauded their folk dancing, who smiled and talked to their people. And these might have been the elite, but it doesn't matter. They saw what we were all about. That has to have some psychological impact on them. The city had definitely put on its Sunday best for us. We knew that in Pyongyang there's often no electricity, but for us, we had heating, light. They rolled out the carpet for us. The difficulty with Pyongyang is you don't know whether this is their normal life or do they do something specially for us. And there's no way we could find out.
I looked out my window at night, and you see the city, not a light anywhere. It's a regular looking city, but there's not one light in any building. 6.45, a friend of mine and I met in the lobby to go running. Um, nobody followed us out the front of the hotel. And of course it was snowing, so perhaps nobody expected that we really were gonna go. But um, we went out the door and we got 100 yards, 200 yards or something out the front of the hotel. And we heard over the loudspeaker, it, so it sounded like, it sounded like a jailbreak or something. And I said, do you think that's about us? And sure enough, about two minutes later, a couple of guards came out of bushes, like from nowhere, and went like this, said, you know, they couldn't talk to us. They just motioned, back, go back, you can't leave. We gave master classes. I gave master classes to two uh, very talented young people. What was remarkable <laughs> was that it was very cold in, in Pyongyang, and their buildings are not heated usually. So when I went into their music university, it was almost freezing. And when we finally arrived at the room, that room was heated, but very few. And uh, the poor students who were playing for me, their hands were freezing. They were cold. All right, we're gonna hear Mozart's fifth finally concerto first movement, Allegro. And I'm sorry, I don't have your name. Kim Shona. Kim Shona. 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 Playing is excellent, very excellent. Again, the intonation is very good. Intonation and very beautiful sound. Sometimes your legato playing is a little bit cut up that you're not going to the logical conclusion of a phrase. It's in the very beginning, when you start, you know, you play. If you go to the third note, but you grow into that third note. It's, it's, it makes so much more sense like a flower opening that you finally you see the beauty of the flower. That it starts a little bit shy and then open. These three notes build, not just equal. There's, it's not equal. Yeah. Can you start again? Yeah. It's saying it beautifully. To the third note. Oh, no. 
오늘 받으면서 느낀 건 어쩐지 항상 대학에서 수업 받던 거나 별로 차이는 없었습니다. 음, 대학, 우리 대학에도 훌륭한 선생님들이 많습니다. 그러니까 음, 평상시 훌륭, 수업 받을 때나 듣은 소리가 거의 같습니다. 기술적 문제들이나 이렇게 작품 형상적 문제들이 저희 퍼브로 말하면 우리 인민이 알고 우리 조국과 장모님께서 하시는 훌륭한 음악가가 되는 것입니다. 기술 많이 배워 배우기 시간이 짧으니까 막 부닥게 많이 좀더 기회가 있었으면 좋겠습니까? 미국의 줄리어드 음악 대학이라는 데를 아세요? 못 들어봤습니까? 못 들어봤어요. <웃음> 그런 데 가서 공부할 기회가 있다면 공부를 좀더 배우고 싶습니까? 우리는 여기에서도 얼마든지 훌륭한 음악가로 살아날 수 있게 배울 수 있습니다. 조건도 다 이렇게 갖춰져 있고 선생님들도 훌륭한 선생님들이 우리 배워주기 때문에 우리 기량이 남들 먹지 않다고 생각합니다. 저도. 그래도 항상 이렇게 좀더 잘하는 사람한테는 배울 수 있는 우리나라에도 그렇게 얼마든지 잘하는 사람들이 선생님들이 많단 말입니다. 예. 우리나라에서도 배울 수도 있습니다. 아이 나우 데이 트라이 포더 아츠 앤 데이 트라이 투 리치 더 레벨 메비 오브 더 사우스 오브 이븐 아메리카 데이 데이 스톨 하브 리틀 빗트 고 아나 뮤지컬 레벨 비카즈 데이 나 릴리 익스포즈 To other performances that much, and uh, it's still very reclusive and closed country in that respect. It was my turn. I was invited to conduct the National Orchestra of Korea. I walked out on stage and found before me some 80 black-suited men, all bedecked with ties. The only women, two harpists, set back against the wall. Uh, during the next 80 minutes, we rehearsed and performed Wagner's Meistersinger Overture and Tchaikovsky's Overture Fantasy Romeo and Juliet. There were all men in the state orchestra, so I asked my minder, my interpreter, so why is this so? He says, well, we use the model of the old, old orchestras of the last two centuries, like Vienna. I said, well, you know that even Vienna, they even have some women now. And in New York Philharmonic, we have 50% women. And he says, well, that's very interesting, but we don't do that yet. So, uh, you know, this is some of the indication that uh, it shows that their thoughts are very rigid but they weren't close to the option of my suggestion that, uh, that perhaps a group of students could come over to New York and study for a, a short amount of time uh, in our university. The cultural minister had said that there would be something we could talk about in the future. So I do see that this door is open a little bit. Astonishing was the high level of playing, of flexibility in following the conductor's beat of phrasing. The musicians began to sway with the sounds they were making. We had become friends through music.
we had a chance to hear the Mendelssohn Octet performed by four North Korean musicians and four of our principal players, including concertmaster Glenn Dicktero. It was a sensational, impromptu almost, reading with four Korean musicians. They hadn't seen each other, and here they were playing the Mendelssohn Octet together. We had assumed that it was going to be an open rehearsal, but it was regarded almost as a concert. So I didn't know what to expect when we, uh, you know, arrived on stage and started playing. But after the fourth or fifth bar, I said, "My goodness, these people are attuned. They know exactly what we're doing. For some reason, they knew what our interpretation was." And I, you know, certainly they'd never heard us. No, I mean the chamber music is very delicate thing. You either feel the rhythm and the sound of the person next to you, or you don't. And. Um, I felt that they were really on the edge to, to be receptive to the kind of musical phrasing that we were all making, to the kind of rhythmic intensity we were trying to build together. Um, it was really fantastic. It's, you, don't, you just absolutely do not need words because music is a language completely unto itself. So it was a thrill to share that with them. At the conclusion of the performance of the Mendelssohn, Mr. Dicktero gestured to me I was trembling. I brought up to the stage an original composition by a young girl from a New York public school, Farah Taslima, and she dedicated it to the children of Korea. Well, thinking back on it, it does seem to be quite wonderfully symbolic. A child from one country reaching out to children in another country through art. Farah calls her piece Serenity. It is a beautiful, brief song from a child's heart. I was always careful not to get into politics, but I did ask them why it was important for the New York Philharmonic. And Kim Kye-gwan, who was the second man in the foreign ministry, he put it very succinctly and he said, you saw that there was no traffic yesterday when you were driving around. I'm sure you noticed. I said, yes. He says, that's because we don't have any oil or petrol. And he says, we need that and we need to make efforts to establish trade relations and manufacturing relations with other countries. He didn't say the West. And this is one way that we think we will start to make some progress. From the start, we set out and made certain conditions, which I laid down to them in the first meetings. I said, we will come as an American orchestra, 
We will play our anthem and we will play your anthem. We will have both flags on the stage. We will choose the program. And I want it televised. You know that 15 truckloads of television equipment, including satellite transmission trucks, crossed the DMZ to go into Pyongyang for this concert from Seoul, okay, with 80 technicians and executives. You know, it was a kind of a United Nations effort. When you see all these disparate groups of people coming together and we're able to bring it off in such a short period of time. So she will be the one who is going to interpret yeah. to our audience. Yeah. Oh, what you're going to say. we were just talking about Very quick. Yeah. If you would just stay in, in around, because I, we need to talk to you. How is your English? It's uh, good? Very excellent. It's excellent. Okay. She's my colleague. She's your colleague, yeah. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> 
Ja tam widzę twoją osobę. Uh, you, you know the uh, the ladies as in Korea is very so shy, a little shy, and uh -huh. maybe she have to, she has to think a little. But I will try to also say something. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, the She's too shy, I think so. Excited. I'm very excited and I'm looking forward to our music making that hopefully that it will reach their souls and their heart and then it will open them up. It can be a way to uh, calm people's nerves and be a ground, uh, a common ground through which emotions can be felt and people can perhaps um, find a way to start to understand each other. We went to Dresden when East Germany was closed. So, I mean, there were many uh, opportunities for this kind of thing to happen. And every time we went, it never, at the very least, did any harm. And most of the time, it did some good. It's very difficult to say in advance uh, what will happen. Historically, we would like to think that it will have a positive effect. All we can do is try. Right away, the concert was, was off to a very exciting start. We played two anthems. We've done that a number of times, but playing the North Korean anthem right together with the U.S. anthem has to be somewhat of a frisson. It's a, it, it was quite a, quite a rubbing together. Of course, we played the Korean anthem first, the North Korean anthem, and then the Stars and Stripes. I have to say that that was one of the more emotional moments in my life to see this. Because, you know, we used to in this country play the national anthem before sporting events, baseball games, hockey games, etc. And people are cheering, they're shouting, they're talking, they're eating hot dogs, etc. But really, the anthem is to be played for major, solemn state occasions. This is what it's all about. And for everybody to stand up, and hear the anthem in that atmosphere in a foreign country with whom we are technically and in fact still at war it was really very emotional to me. People in the press have written that we played the anthem in front of these North Koreans, but we also played it in front of and had standing at attention the ambassador from Cuba, the ambassador from Syria, the ambassador from Iran, and many other countries like that who are not necessarily our greatest friends. Towards the end of the 19th century, the New York Philharmonic commissioned the Czech composer Anton Dvorak to compose a symphony. New York Dvorak gave his symphony the title, The New World Symphony. 
드보르 자크는 자기가 작곡한 새 작품의 신세계로부터라는 제목을 달았습니다. 줄굽게 감상하세요. When I started to uh, speak to uh, the Koreans in Korean, a language which I do not speak, and had great difficulty in uh, learning, um, I noticed that people were absolutely delighted. Firstly, I noticed that they understood what I was saying, which amazed, amazed me greatly. And secondly, they understood that the effort I was putting into it was a sign that I was trying to reach out a hand. <laughs> People told me who watched the television broadcast back home that, that the audience seemed to be impassive and cold, but clearly being there, it was obviously a, a cultural sort of difference because the audience was intently listening to every note we were playing. chocolate industry mm -hmm. and I'm here to, to, to see if we can uh, import chocolate and or produce chocolate here in mm -hmm. North Korea. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you think of uh, this concept? It's a great thing. I think it's, uh, we can share relationship with America and North Korea. It's a, it's a great thing, yes. Uh, cultural relation is a, is a basis and after we can do business and share everything, I think. It's very good that the United States, at last, recognized that diplomacy and friendship is the only way for peace. Uh, uh, to be, take an aggressive measure uh, is not possible against Korea. Huh? Korea will defend itself. Uh, but we always welcome with open arms anyone around the world that wants friendship with us. Does this concert give us peace? Yes, of course, I'm sure. I mean, if you, if you can hear the words of President Bush from a few years ago, and now you can see this, it's a big change towards the peace and understanding between DPRK and the United States. It's a great thing, indeed. Then the next emotional moment was when we played Ariram. Now this came about because when I first went there in October of last year, I went to a symphony concert, and one of the pieces was this Ariram. And a Korean lady who was sitting next to us from America said to me, this is the most famous folk song in Korea, both sides of Korea. This is, we all grew up playing it. So I said, well, I want the music of that, and I want to take the score and show it to Lauren and see whether this is something we should do as an encore. And she said, if you do this as an encore, you won't have a dry eye on either side of the DMZ. And so we played it, and she was right. finally reached the Arirang, the last encore, that warmth and the falling away of the veil between the two peoples, there it was, it was dropping, it was, it was visibly, palpably dropping. You can argue with me, you can say that at the end of the day this was just a concert. I didn't see that. I will argue vehemently that I saw it. I saw the softening a little bit with, with individual people, and that's where it starts, individual people.
By the end of the Arirang, as I said, the, the, when the tentative waving started, don't go, don't go. We don't want you to go yet. We don't want to go either. We don't want to go either. One or two of us went like this. We're leaving. Bye. Nice to have played for you. And they started, somebody waved back. And then somebody else on the stage, a few more people started waving. And they, the whole audience was waving to us, and we were waving to them. And it was human to human, you know, not rehearsed. This was not, it was just, that was the moment of connection where we all felt like they got us and we got them and, and something had happened. Um, it was very moving. Exceeded our greatest expectations, Absolutely. because after all, we were in going to uh, to unknown territory, unknown to us, and uh, you never know what to expect. But uh, I, I felt so much warmth and enthusiasm coming from the audience. Did you feel that? Absolutely, absolutely. From the very yeah. beginning, I mean, they they wanted absolutely. to love us they and were uh, smiling. They were just, uh, just hmm. loving us up. People to people. Yeah, that's and music does it all. Doesn't oh, it? that's right. <laughs> music is that language. Let's not underestimate it. Absolutely. Congratulations. Well, congratulations well, to you, you, brother. Well, okay, <laughs> big brother. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Can you put the song? Yes, we know. I'm here to say congratulations to you. Ah, thank you. Are you happy now? Are you happy now? <laughs> I just before told the president that I cannot sleep tonight. Enrico. Enrico. Enrico DJ. It was my pleasure, my dear. My pleasure. Uh, I think uh, it would be a very good opportunity for us to what uh, to exchange our minds yeah, through music. Actually, music is a silent language to open heart to each other. I know that. That's why I like it. So. And then it's the first time for us to talk to each other. But uh, we sit together and we talked. If we continued in this way, I'm sure the relations will be okay. My North Korean daughter. I think the general happiness of the people who we dealt with, the way they came to say goodbye to us, and leaving in the most remarkably happy fashion. When the plane was pulling away on Wednesday afternoon, they stood there and waved at us. I mean, that was kind of a real show of friendship, and that was not put on. And so one just hopes that this permeates the political fields, and people say, yeah, there is possibilities there. I don't know what happened in the country after we left. This I have no idea. I'd love to know.